I'm done. Let's talk about it. So, Eleanor and Park. I just finished. I gave myself enough time to take a shower and mill it over in the shower and now I am talking to you guys about how this book ended. First of all, I just want to say that I totally called it. I literally said the sentence in my last video. <laughs> Everything's about to break in almost the same breath as how I mentioned that Tina and Richie were parallel evils. Oh my god, I can't believe I said that. When you find out that Richie is the one who's been writing on Eleanor's books. I lost my mind. It was like, you know, honestly, not even that huge of a detail in the book itself, but one of the best plot twists I've ever encountered. I never in a million years thought that was what was going to happen. I never even suspected it. I had a pretty good feeling that it wasn't Tina, and I didn't know who it was going to be otherwise, and Richie never popped into my head. That was awesome. Um, obviously not awesome that someone's evil stepdad was writing horrible things on their book, but just like from a writing standpoint, that was awesome. I was totally right in my suspicions that something really terrible was about to go down and it was a little bit humorous that it happened literally like the next page after uh, what I had assigned us last time. When Eleanor came home and she heard the fighting and then she went in her room and slowly started to piece together that her room had been ransacked and that her stuff was everywhere and when she found the note, Oh my gosh, there was so much like anxiety in that scene and then she just ran and I loved every moment up until that part and then after that I have to be kind of honest, stuff kind of fell apart for me a little bit. It was a very confusing last 50 pages. I did like how Tina helped her, you know, it showed that high schoolers can be mean but they're not monsters and they understand when they see a fellow teen in trouble that, you know, okay, now it's serious, we gotta help. So I appreciated that. I loved Park's confusion about seeing Eleanor with all of these kids that she would never spend time with otherwise. But the whole panic surrounding what they needed to do next, how to get Eleanor to be safe, I understood that they're in the middle of a very scary, real, chaotic event, but they didn't think anything through at all. I really, like, I liked that Park's dad allowed him to drive her up there, that he sort of, you know, took the brunt of whatever Park's mom was gonna say when she realized what had happened, and I... I get why it all happened the way it did, I guess, but there were just so many doors that didn't get closed, and I understand that this book is supposed to, you know, emulate real life and doors don't always get closed, but I feel like a fault that some romance books have is that there really aren't characters outside of the two main characters. There's these other people that exist to pout out the world, but all that really matters are the two people who are in love. And I didn't get that with this book. I cared about Eleanor's mom, and I cared about her siblings, and I cared about the other kids at school, and I cared about whatever that comment was about how Steve was going to kill Tina's dad. What's up with Tina's dad? Is he horrible too? And you didn't ever find out what happens. It's implied that Eleanor's mom and the kids aren't with Richie anymore, but they never say, and Eleanor never mentions it when she's up in Minnesota. I'm really glad that Eleanor didn't die because I really thought that's what was going to happen, but it didn't end. I mean, I guess it's supposed to end positive because Eleanor sends Park the postcard with the three words that I'm assuming were I love you, but they also could have been goodbye forever, or they also could have been super love pizza. I don't know. I mean, obviously, it was probably I love you, but they also didn't tell you that, and so I guess it's implied like, hey, they're gonna be okay. Maybe they'll see each other. But did it not bother anyone else that the entire time they were working out this plan and, like, worrying that they weren't gonna see each other ever again and all the stuff and this is the end, did it never occur to them that they're gonna be graduated in two years? And so in two years, they could just figure out what to do. I mean, I know Park made a comment like, why couldn't this have happened later when she could run to him rather than away from him? But I mean, like, long distance relationships aren't totally out the window. They both like each other enough. I could definitely see these two sappy lovebirds promising that they'd be loyal forever. They could talk on the phone. They I mean, I guess, okay, I guess I'm not viewing this exactly through the right lens because we live in an age where Skype and FaceTime and cell phones and there's just so many more ways to be connected to someone so the distance of Omaha to St. Paul, Minnesota is a lot greater than it would be today and it'd be a lot easier to keep in touch over that amount of time. They are literally further away, well not literally, 
they're actually further away from each other back in the 1980s and they would be today and so I guess it makes it tougher but like it's two years you could decide that you're gonna move in together that is never even thought of <laughs> that's never addressed and the entire time that he drives her that's a long drive the entire time that he drives her up there they never once think we'll wait for each other or like see ya in two years or like what's next and get it they were just running away from Richie they had to get Eleanor safe that wasn't totally on their minds but like Park was miserable for an entire year after that did he never ask for her phone number to just call and say hey so are we dating still the long distance or is this done it just seemed like more action could have been taken on their parts to make sure that they were either going to break up or stay together and come up with a plan together for after school rather than just leaving and moping. And I didn't really understand why Eleanor just tried to cut herself out of Park's life entirely but then decided not to and I don't, I don't really know. So overall it was a great book that I really enjoyed and I'm not the kind of person who like one thing about a book that I don't like ruins the entire book for me because most of this book was an adorable, innocent, sweet romance that I loved. I was not super keen on the ending, but I still appreciate why it ended that way. I just wish that I'd been given a little bit more information. You know, I, I get open-ended endings and I think that that's useful in some respects, but did not totally love it here. I really want to know your thoughts, obviously. How did you feel about this? Did you think the ending was great? Did you think it was a little lacking? I felt like we had so many details of every little moment of the relationship leading up to the very end and then poof, nothing. So I would still definitely recommend this book to people, obviously. Finish reading it if you haven't. Well, I mean, I just spoiled everything if you've made it this far in this video and you haven't read it, but uh, let me know your comments below. I definitely want to know what you think. I have never heard a single negative thing about this book ever, so maybe I'm the only one who feels this way, but I definitely want to know. Let me know in the comments. You have a week off. You have a break. Next week, I'm going to have like a full review of the entire book where I give myself some time to think about all these things and come up with a more cohesive, coherent review. Um, but if you want to get ahead, this is the book that we're going to be reading next, The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. Another one that I don't know much about, but make sure to go pick up a copy if you want to participate in my next book. Thanks, guys. <sighs> Let me know what you thought.